Located just off the coast of St. Pete, Florida, lies an island with no roads, no residents, and more shells than you could imagine. And if shells aren't enough to draw you to this beautiful island, perhaps the miles of secluded coastline will be. We're Jamie and Skylar, and today we're taking you to Shell Key. We'll also show you how you can visit this beautiful island yourself and where to find some amazing food and views along the way. But before we boarded our ferry to the island, we had to grab some food, and we had just the place in mind. Our brunch stop took us to Phil Deli in Tierra Verde, which offers a full-service deli along with breakfast, lunch, dinner, and of course, coffee. Our food orders came out quickly and we were ready to eat. I went with the Philly egg and cheese breakfast sandwich. It's got scrambled eggs, cheese, and also a sliced ribeye. Which sandwich did you get? I just went with the traditional Philly with mushrooms, peppers, and onions. We found both sandwiches to be delicious, especially the Philly, which was one of the best we'd ever had. And we couldn't resist grabbing some freshly baked cookies to go before catching our ride to the island. After just a few more minutes in the car, we reached the Fort DeSoto boat ramp where we'd be boarding the ferry to Shell Key. The ferry is operated by Hubbard's Marina and runs three times a day, Friday through Monday during the fall and winter seasons. We chose the noon ferry for our visit, which gave us the option to return either at 2.30 or 4.30 p.m. As we had expected, the ferry was mostly empty and we were soon on our way to Shell Key. Short ferry ride, we already saw some dolphins. The ferry ride to Shell Key was about 15 minutes, but it seemed like even less, with the dolphin and pelican sightings keeping us entertained along the way. And before we knew it, we had reached the island, which we were excited to explore on this cool winter day. to Shell Key and it is clear where the island got its name because there are shells everywhere. Yeah and as we were expecting there are only a few people out on this island. There were a couple other groups of people on the ferry that came over with us but they pretty much stuck to the south end of the island so it's looking like we're gonna have the entire north half of this island all to ourselves so let's go check it out. But first we had to set up camp. And with almost two miles of empty beachfront, we had no trouble finding the perfect spot. With our beachfront spot secured, it was time to do some exploring. For Skylar, that meant walking all the way to the end of the island, while the pelican and I decided to hang back and look for shells. We found the beach on Shell Key to truly be a sheller's paradise. And while I did enjoy looking through the endless shells, I found it to be even more enjoyable observing some of the living creatures on the beach. So we haven't been out here very long, but we've already found some pretty cool shells. Take a look at these. So if you're coming here specifically for shells, you are able to bring the shells home that you find but you have to verify that there's nothing living inside of them. And if you're lucky, you might find some full sand dollars out here. If you find one that's a lighter color like this one, then it is safe to take home. If it's a darker color like this one, you do have to check the outside of it and the back of it to make sure that there are no spines on it. And you have to make sure that when you hold it, it doesn't leave a yellow mark because that means it's still living and it needs to stay on the beach. 
Now that we've shown you some of the shells and creatures that you can find on this beach, let's see what Skylar's up to. We do want to let you know that we'll be posting more Florida Beach Guides soon, so if you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss those episodes. All right, guys, so I just finished the walk from the far south end of Shell Key, where the ferry dropped us off, to as far north as you could walk on the beach. It took about 20, 25 minutes, so I'm guessing it was about a mile and a half or so. And in that mile and a half, I only met three other people. So on a warmer day, you probably would see more people, but it's still gonna be a secluded and peaceful walk on the beach. If that's the type of walk you're into, I would highly recommend it. After spending a little time relaxing and enjoying the empty beach, it was almost 2.30 and I was ready to catch the ferry back. We enjoyed the peaceful walk back to the boat, maybe a little too much, as they were already pulling up the stairs by the time we arrived. Thankfully, they were kind enough to let us on and we didn't have to wait two more hours for the next ferry. The ride back to the boat ramp was especially enjoyable as the waters were calm and our Philadelphia cookies were delightful. And while we only brought a handful of shells back with us, one of the other passengers brought a whole bucket full, including this massive horse conch shell, which we learned to be the state shell of Florida. We just got back to the Fort DeSoto boat ramp, which means we were out on the island for about two hours. Now, I definitely could have spent another two hours on the island, but there's little shade out there and also no restrooms, so this one was ready to come back after two hours. I was. Now, if you are planning a trip out to Shell Key, keep in mind that it is an uninhabited island and there are absolutely no amenities. But if you're looking for great shelling or a secluded beach experience, then it is the spot for you. Now we did get to enjoy those two cookies from Philadelphia on the boat ride back, but after all that walking we're still pretty hungry and we hear there's a cool rooftop restaurant nearby so we're going to go check that out next. Our dinner plans took us just four miles to the north where you'll find Vista at the top on the roof of the Residence Inn. Bad news guys, we made it to the Vista at the top, but it is closed, we think due to the cold, but thankfully they were kind enough to let us go up to the rooftop to check it out. Yeah, I'm really glad that we were able to do this because the view up here is amazing. It'd be perfect to grab a drink, have a meal, and definitely watch a sunset. It is beautiful. Yeah, but the good news is that we did spot a tiki bar from the rooftop down below, so we're gonna go check that out to see if they have any food. Our new dinner plans took us to the Island Grill and Raw Bar. As our luck would have it, the poolside tiki bar was also closed, but we were still able to find plenty of outdoor seating. Here we ordered the cucumber cooler, which was slightly sweet and very refreshing. Next came the lobster bisque, which wasn't too heavy on the lobster, but it was rich, flavorful, and a great way to warm up on a cold day. We also ordered chicken wings, which were pretty good, but we honestly forgot to record them. And that's because of these, the char-grilled oysters, which came at the recommendation of the waitress and had all of our attention. We ordered the combo, which came with two each of the garlic butter parmesan, chipotle lime, and oysters casino. Each of the three types of oysters were melt-in-your-mouth delicious. And while I absolutely loved each of the three flavors, my favorite was the garlic butter parmesan. Skylar's favorite was the chipotle lime, but like me, he was glad that we ordered all three. Would you spend a day on Shell Key? Let us know in the comments. And for even more uninhabited island adventures in the Tampa Bay area, go ahead and click on this video next. Thanks for watching.